second part of the seminar for today. So the talk will be given by Emanuele Caputo from, from Uvescule, and he will be speaking about parallel transport on non-collapse RCDK in spaces. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Matthias, for the introduction, and thank you, all the organizers of this series of seminars. So I would like to continue from the, the preceding talk about Calcus approach on metric measure space, and in particular in the RCD setting. And I would like to present the construction of parallel transportation in this case, in particular in the case of uh, a non-collapsed RCD spaces. So uh, for what concerns my presentation, I would like to start presenting the problem in the, in the smooth setting. But what I really would like to do here is to highlight some feature of the problem in the, in the smooth setting that we would like to export to our uh, non-smooth setting and discussing existence and uniqueness of the problem. And then I would like to move with a brief introduction to the setting of RCD space, more to have a definition for today. And uh, three, I would like to formalize the problem of parallel transport in our setting. Namely, I would like to describe what is the object that we would like to transport, which is a measurable vector field that has been already introduced in the, in the previous talk by Nicola Gilli. And then they describe what is the object along which we would like to do the transport, which is the flow of a sobel vector field. And here I would like to give a brief introduction to the theory of regular Lagrangian flow. And then uh, move to the core part. So what is uh, the object we would like to study? What is uh, the solution of our problem? What is parallel transport? And then describe both uh, existence and the, in particular uh, uh, uniqueness as a consequence of uh, a formula we present called Leibniz formula. Uh, and that, yeah, and that's all. So let's start from uh, the, the presentation of the problem in, uh, in the smooth setting. Uh, the problem reads as follows. We consider a smooth Riemannian manifold MG and the curve gamma, which is a smooth curve with values in the, in the Riemannian manifold. And we consider a vector V, which belongs to the tangent space at the initial point. The goal is to find a, a smooth vector field along the curve gamma, namely, a um, function which associate to t, a vector vt, which belongs to the tangent space at point gamma t, such that the covariant derivative of the vector field with respect to the velocity of the curve is zero at every time, and its, um, its evaluation at the point zero is the initial, the, the datum of the problem, d. So uh, a very classical book of uh, Riemannian geometry, you can solve this problem by recasting the, the condition uh, using the extrinsic approach of um, via coordinates by recasting the condition of having null covariant derivative into an uh, ordinary differential equation in Rn. But I would like to present another construction, which is the one we, are, uh, we, we will look at and we are trying to generalize to, to the non-smooth setting. So let's consider a smooth vector field on uh, our Riemannian manifold. And I consider the flow map of this vector field, namely a given time t and the point x. And I consider the flow uh, from point x at time t as the point eta t on, um, on the manifold, where the curve eta solves the ordinary differential equation drifted by the vector field b and starts from the initial condition x. Therefore, I have a well-defined map, which is a map from space and time with values in the, in the manifold. I fix one point in the manifold, and I consider a curve gamma, which is the integral curve, which starts from this point x. And I fix one uh, vector v bar, which belongs to a tangent space at uh, the point x. OK, so uh, now we can do the following. We, we, we consider a smooth vector, a, a smooth curve for the, with, from the, with values in a fixed tangent space, which is the tangent space at the point X of the manifold. Um, and we can consider the follow, uh, let's call it little v of t. And when, then we can define capital V of t, which is the image through the differential of the flow of this curve living at the initial point. Uh, so by since the flow goes from uh, point x to point gamma, the flow time team goes from point x to point gamma t, this capital V of t lives at the uh, in the tangent space at the point gamma t. Therefore, this is a smooth vector field along the curve gamma. We can compute its uh, covariant derivative with respect to, to the velocity uh, of the curve, and we can express it in terms of some derivatives, in particular the derivative of little v of t, which is a derivative in a fixed 
space at initial, at, at initial point. And in particular, this formula on the right involves the differential of the flow, which in this case is a different field, so it can be, it's, it's a well-defined object, and the covariant derivative of the vector field V, B, which in this case is, uh, is uh, smooth. Um, therefore, if we want to parallel transport an initial vector V bar uh, along the curve gamma, what we want to have is that this uh, left hand side to, to be zero and to match at every time and to match the, the, initial, the initial condition. So if uh, the left hand side is zero, and then we have we apply the differential of the inverse of the flow map. What we get is that the problem is recasted into solving an ordinary differential equation at the initial tangent space and asking that the value at initial time V0 is equal to our datum bar V. So the goal of my presentation is to, expo to explain how we exported this problem to the no-smooth setting. So to give a, a meaning to you of what is a vector field, we heard already in the previous talk, uh, what is a flow of a sufficient regular uh, vector field? Uh, what is its regularity, and uh, and why we can define the differential of the flow, and what uh, what are the properties of the differential of the flow? Okay. Uh, moreover, uh, uniqueness of uh, of parallel transport can be seen in a very compact way as a consequence of the following formula that we call it Le Leibniz formula. So we consider two smooth vector field along the curve gamma. Uh, we consider the uh, real valued function, which associate to, to point uh, to time t, the scalar product between bt and, uh, and wt at the point gamma t. And this is a smooth map, and we can compute its derivative with respect to time. The derivative, the derivative with respect to time contains the covariant derivative of uh, the first vector field with respect to the velocity of the curve, multiplied scalarly by the second one, plus a symmetric term. In particular, this forms uh, is a, as a stronger consequence than uniqueness, but in particular, it implies, for instance, uniqueness of a parallel transport. Uh, as um, I just put here the proof, which is very classical. Consider two uh, smooth vector fields along the curve gamma, which are both parallel transportation of some initial ve vector V bar. Then we can consider the real, fu real valued function, which uh, um, takes the no um, computes the norm of the difference of these two vector fields at the point gamma t squared. We derive this with respect to time and use the formula above and the linearity of the covariant derivative to get that this function g as derivative zero at every time is zero in, uh, in zero. So it's zero for every time, namely the two vector fields are, are the same. Okay, so uh, for, uh, now I would like to move to the setting in which we are working that we saw many times. Uh, the, uh, to, to do so, yeah, we'll start with a very brief introduction. So we work in a setting of metric measure space. A metric measure space is a triple XDM, where XD is a complete and separable uh, metric space, and M is a non-negative uh, Borel measure, which is finite on, uh, on bounded sets. Um, Okay, uh, in, uh, in two independence work, uh, Sturm and Lott in Villani formulated the so-called CDKN condition after preceding work in the in the smooth setting, uh, which is a synthetic notion for a metric measure space or lower bound on Ricci curvature by K and upper bound on dimension by N. Uh, this, uh, this class of space has some interesting properties, um, which uh, the first one is the consistency with the case of smooth Riemannian manifold. Indeed, what you can do is that a smooth Riemannian manifold can be naturally seen as a, a metric measure space. And, and therefore, CD, uh, uh, um, checking the CDKN condition on the metric measure structure is equivalent to, to, to check the properties using the smooth structure. Uh, the notion is intrinsic, namely does not rely on a smooth approximation by Riemannian manifold. And it is stable with a very natural notion of convergence of uh, a metric measure structure. The problem with, the, with this class for what concerns uh, uh, mainly the, um, what we will talk today is that, uh, for instance, uh, it contains Fiesler structures. How, how we can see it? We can see it. The, the simplest way is to look at the, the a famous example by Cordero, Rasken, Villani, and Sturm, which says that uh, the, the metric measure space Rn with any norm on it and the n-dimensional Lebesgue measure is always a CD0n space. 
So in particular, we can consider also norm, which doesn't come from a scalar product for, for like for instance, the one norm, and, which, and this is still a CD zero in space. So the idea here is to rule out uh, this, this um, class of example by passing to a subset. Um, uh, and the definition for the finite dimensional setting uh, that what we are interested in is the we, we say uh, that a metric measure space is an RCDKN space if satisfied the CDKN condition and the Sobolev space W12 is Hilbert. And this notion is called the infinitesimal Hilbertianity and is very important to uh, perform calculus tool in, in this class in this class of spaces. Um, and uh, for this presentation, it's also important to introduce a subclass of this class of space, which is the so-called class on non-collapsed RCDKN space, where here we mean that the reference measure M is the n-dimensional Hausdorff measure where M is the upper bound there. So uh, apart from this, uh, I would like to give this as a concrete definition for today. So we say that a metric measure space is an RCDKN space. If, uh, apart from a condition on the growth of balls, the following conditions are satisfied. The first one is that uh, given any Sobolev function as presented in the, in the previous talk with minimal weak upper gradient less or equal than one, um, this function admits a one Lipschitz representative. So here we pass from an infinitesimal information into a local one. The second property is that the Sobolev space W12 is a Hilbert space. So namely the space is infinitesimal Hilbertian. And the third condition is that we ask for a validity or a weak and dimensional uh, Bochner inequality in, uh, in our setting. This, uh, as we saw already before for the I dimensional case, this is asked for uh, uh, in an in integrated version uh, for a sufficiently good class of uh, function f integrated against a sufficiently good class of the te test function. I want to, to stress out that the class of function needed in order to test the inequality one. Uh, is not empty and can be found in an, any abstract uh, metric measure space by the property of the its semigroup. And the consequences from uh, from one is that uh, we have a further regularizing property of the its semigroups. Therefore, we can define uh, a second order object. In particular, we can define what is the Hessian of a sufficiently good function and as an L2 integrable object. Therefore, in particular, uh, we can speak what is the gradient of the gradient of a function. So uh, this leads in particular to define by uh, integration by parts what are uh, Sobolev vector fields. I, I will come back to this with a much bit more concrete uh, de definition of what I mean here. Now I would like to pass to the formalization of the problem. First of all, I would like to state what is the object we would like to, to, to transport which is a, a, measure, a measurable vector field. Uh, as we've seen uh, before, I would like to introduce uh, in a very brief way what is the space L0 Tx. So uh, we start with uh, the space uh, L0 of x, which is the space of Borel function, which are uh, uh, quotiented uh, uh, up, to, up, up to almost everywhere equality. And uh, we consider a, a probability measure, uh, M tilde, which has the same negligible set of M, and then we can uh, may define a metric uh, on the space um, L0 of x, which is the integral of uh, the minimum between one and the modulo of f minus g in d m, um, m tilde. And this is done in order to have this, this distance to be, to, to be, to, to be finite. And um, uh, the, the choice of the measure m tilde affects the, as, as actually we have seen also in the previous, uh, in the previous talk, the choice of, uh, in this case, of M tilde affects the metric uh, in under consideration. But what is important here is actually the, 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 to the topology that we put on L0 of X. And this is ind independent of the, of the choice of M tilde. Uh, now we consider a metric measure space. And um, what we want to do is to associate the so-called space of measurable one form. So we have uh, that exists uh, in a unique way, as, as we said before. As we saw before, a couple L0 t star x and d, where d uh, is an operator, uh, which is called the differential, which uh, goes from w12 x into this uh, space that we just constructed, which is L0 t star x. And this operator is linear. The target is a vector space. This operator is linear. Moreover, the L0 t star x, x algebraically has the structure of a module over the ring of, um, 
measurable function. So it can be object here can be multiplied by measurable function. Uh, moreover, uh, there exists an operator called the, the, the pointwise norm, which takes a measurable one, one form and returns you a non-negative function, which is consistent with, with the minimal weak upper gradient. Namely, if you take the differential of a function and then you take the minimal weak upper uh, sorry, the, um, the pointwise norm, this is equal as the element of L0 of, to the minimal weak upper gradient. And moreover, we can undo this space with the topology, which is metrized by a distance which is very similar to the distance on L0 function, which we take two measurable one form, and we consider the L0 distance between uh, the point as norm of B minus W and uh, N0. Moreover, this space is, um, is uh, generated by a differential of elements in W1 to X, as we saw also before. And uh, what we're actually interested, since this is the space of one form, and we're interested in vector fields, we define the space of measurable vector field as the dual uh, in a suitable sense of modules of the space of measurable one form. Uh, uh, if the space is infinitesimal in Bertian, uh, we have also a notion of gradient, which goes from W12 of X into L0 T TX, uh, which is a linear operator and which is still consistent uh, with the, um, in, the, in that sense, uh, with the notion of minimal weak upper gradient. Moreover, here uh, elements in uh, the L0TX verifies in a point or essential pointwise sense the, the parallelogram identity. Um, therefore, by polarization, we can define in this case um, a notion of scalar product between vector fields, uh, uh, which returns you back a function, which is morally the scalar product of the tangent vector at, at, at every point. Um, and this operator is, is L0 bilinear and symmetric. For, for this talk, we are, uh, we are interested actually in considering uh, some um, uh, vector field with some integral properties. So we look at the subset of the space of measurable vector fields with the L2 integrable um, pointwise norm, and we call it uh, L2 TX. Uh, with, and this space with a very natural no norm, which is the L2 integral of the, um, of the pointwise norm as the structure of an Hilbert space. Um, moreover, as, as I told before, if we assume that the space is an RCDKN space, we can, we can develop a se second order calculus. Therefore, we know now what is a L2 integrable vector field, but now we would like to say what is a vector field in uh, in uh, in um, W12. So we say that a vector field is the, in W12 if there exists an element that here I'm, I'm being a bit sloppy, but uh, on, on purpose because I didn't say where the, this lives, but it has to be two integrable. And uh, out we define the, uh, in the in, uh, in the work by Nicola Gigli on smooth differential geometry, it is defined by asking that the following uh, equality here. Uh, which hold in the, in the smooth, in smooth Riemannian manifold holds in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a distributional sense uh, against sufficiently good function F1 and F2. Notice that here to, uh, to ask for this inequality to hold, I'm writing down the dash the, the of a function. So therefore um, I, have to, I have to define it, but, and this is possible actually in, uh, in, in, the, in, the RCD, in the RCD setting, as I said before. Now I, uh, I would like to, to express uh, the object along which we would like to to do the transport, so we are we are not looking at a, a, a pointwise description. So no, we are not uh, transporting a single tangent vector along a single curve, but we are doing it in a more diffused way by transporting a, a vector field along a flow or a flow of a, a sobel vector field. And this goes to the theory of so-called theory of, of a regular Lagrangian flow, which in the Euclidean setting dates back to Dipernay Lyons and Ambrosio. And in the way that um, I presented here, they are axiomatized in the RCD setting by Ambrosio and Trevisan. So we say that uh, um, uh, and, and I, um, we consider an RCD, an RCD space, an RCDKN space, and we consider a vector field B which is time dependent, which is L1, L1 integrable in time, L2 integrable in space. And, and we define a flow map, which is actually um, a map from 0, 1 times 0, 1 times X with values in X. Here, the, the first entry is the initial time of the flow. The second entry is uh, the time at which we want to evaluate the flow. The third entry is the initial point from which uh, we, the flow line starts. 
And, uh, and uh, we say that this map is a regular Lagrangian flow provided the following condition also. We ask that at every point, uh, the, if car, the flow line that starts from time t at a point x is a, uh, is a continuous curve. And moreover, uh, I, I'm consistent to the fact that the, the, the time t is the initial time of the flow, the flow from time t to time t itself has to be the, the identity. The, the second condition says that we really solve the ordinary differential equation, but the target space is not, is a not doesn't have a vector structure. So we, 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 are, we have to we impose this condition in a weak way by post composition by Sobolev function. So uh, you consider a Sobolev function in uh, W12 and the time t in, uh, in 0, 01. And we ask that for almost every point x, the map that associates to S, the um, evaluation of the function F along the flow line is in W11 and satisfy, satisfies the expected chain rule that we have uh, if um, the map F, F uh, T of S solves the ordinary differential equation that we expect. And uh, um, the third condition uh, is that there, there exists a, co a constant C such that the flow from time t to time s push forward the reference measure is less or equal than a constant times m. Now you can ask why it's needed to include the, 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 the third condition in, in, the, in this definition. And the, the, the problem is that even in the Euclidean setting, actually even in 1D, due to, to, the, regular, to the low regularity of the vector field, you may have that for uh, a, an initial point, you have a lot of uh, integral curves which satisfies con condition, condition two. So if you want to have a well-posed theory of uh, such a notion of flows, uh, you, ask imp you impose a condition three, which is uh, selecting the, the trajectory in condition two uh, by asking that they don't superpose too much. And I would like to, uh, to, to say a bit more about, uh, about uh, condition three. Um, and to say, uh, I would like to express that in the no-smooth setting, well, positive the notion of uh, these flows follows by L1 integral in time L2 space assumption on the gradient of the, of the vector field and L1 in time L infinity space assumption on the divergence of the vector field. Now I would like to show to you by a computation in, in RD uh, how L1 in time L infinity space assumption the divergence of, of, of the vector field gives you automatically that condition three is, uh, is satisfied. So we look at the following computation. We can see now we, we, we work in RD still having, a, a, ah, no, okay. We consider for simplicity a, a vector field BT, which is a Lipschitz in space with Lipschitz constant, which is a bounded uniform in time. Uh, and we can see, so, so that the flow is a Lipschitz map and bijective. Then we can compute the, what we want to compute, the, the push forward via the flow of the Lebesgue measure. And we have that this measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the Lebesgue measure. And the density is given by this function over there, which in particular involves the uh, determinant of the gradient of the flow. Uh, we would like to bound actually this quantity. Uh, how can we do that? The, you look at the curve that associates to T the determinant of the gradient of the flow from a point X. And uh, you look at what ordinary differential equation this solves. And this solves the following linearized ordinary differential equation in terms of the divergence of the vector field computed along, along the flow. So combining these two, these two uh, expression, you get uh, by Gronwell um, inequality, that the push forward via the flow of the Lebesgue measure can be bounded by this, this constant here, which can be taken as a constant in condition three, for instance, in the, in the, in the previous slide. Now, um, I recall you that the point is that we want to imitate the construction I want to pre I presented at the beginning on uh, in the setting of smooth Riemannian manifold. So one uh, important point is that here, there we take use of the differential. We, we are using the differential of the flow. So we are interested about first order re regularity of, of, of the flow map. So I want to uh, say a bit more um, about this, uh, this concept. So we say that uh, um, a Borel map from a metric space into itself is uh, as the Lucy Lipschitz property. If there exists a partition of the set X, um, up to a negligible set into Borel set EI, such that um, F 
uh, restricted to the set EI is Lipschitz for every I. Uh, and this is actually the, the, the type of regularity we, we expect for uh, regular Lagrangian flow in the um, setting of non collapse RCDKN space uh, in a sort of, of, of quantified way. So this theorem goes back to, to Bre and Semola, and it is uh, recently defined by, in another work by Bre, Deng, and Semola. And I like to present it here in the following way. Um, we consider a non-collapsed RCDKN space as a sufficiently regular uh, vector field for which we have, in particular, a well-posed um, notion of flow. Uh, then there exists a function, G, which is a function of time and space, which is a non-negative uh, and L2 integrable in the product, such that uh, if you take a compact, uh, a compact set, then there exists a constant, uh, such that the incremental ratio of the flow uh, can be bounded by the exponential of the integral from zero to t of this function gr computed along the flow in uh, dr plus a, a symmetric term. So we, we have this local. I, I will come. Uh, I will describe a bit better in a while what is this function gr and where it comes from because it's a bit not clear for me. And, uh, and then for every time you have that the growth of the, uh, the modulus of the differential of the flow, which is the replacement in our setting of the um, operator norm of the of the differential of, of the flow in the, in the smooth in the smooth setting, can be bounded by the, the same function there, uh, which in particular the most important thing I would like to highlight is that here you have a constant which is one. So in particular, this uh, modulus of differential of the flow deviates from one by a linear a linear term because these these terms uh, is something of the order one plus plus a constant time t. I would like to stress that uh, the first um, the local estimate there is uh, a quantification of of, of Lucy, Lucy Lipschitz regularity. Uh, in particular, uh, just for simplicity, let's call the, the function there uh, g bar up to where the integral is taken up to time one. Um, and uh, you, you can check that this function is uh, using the, um, the property of the regular Lagrangian flow, that this function is uh, finite almost everywhere. So in particular, we can take the sublevel set of this function g bar. And on the sublevel set of the function g bar, you have that the incremental ratio is uh, bounded by a constant. So we on that set, the function is Lipschitz. So uh, in particular, uh, you up to taking, uh, just because I formulated in a, up to a partition, up to make it into a partition, you can divide the space in such a way uh, the Lucy Lipschitz property holds. Uh, yeah, but now I would like to stress um, where this, this function uh, GR comes, comes into play. Um, and here, uh, since we are working in the no-smooth setting, there are two complications. One complication is due to the no-smoothness of the vector field B, which is a sublevel vector field. And another complication is due to the no-smoothness of the underlying space, which is just an, a non-collapsed RCD KN space. So I would like to simplify the presentation to show to you this estimate in the Euclidean space for sublevel for sublevel for sublevel vector field. Um, we introduce uh, the following operator, which is the uh, r delete wood maximal function we, uh, in the following way. We consider the N, uh, L1 lo locally integrable uh, function over X, and we define the maximal function of uh, the function F at the point X as the supremum of the radius greater uh, than zero, then the average of the, of the ball of radius R centered in X of the modulus of the function F. And in particular, this is uh, uh, this is uh, uh, we're actually in a, in a REM in the following example. So okay, and this is a, a bounded operator from L two into L two, and this will be uh, very important in the sequel. So we we would like to prove the Lucy Lipschitz regularity in the Euclidean setting for a Sobolev vector field. Here, uh, the flow map goes from zero one times zero one times R D into R D. So we take two initial points, two, po two initial point x and y, and the key idea is to di differentiate the the distance square between the flow the flow line at time t, which starts uh, from point x and point y. But now uh, this flow line solves the ordinary differential equation x dot equal to b t of x t, 
So the, the first equality uh, comes just from the fact that this is a flow of the vector field Bt. And then we apply uh, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Uh, and then here we, we use the following uh, uh, properties is that in the Rina space, actually also in general setting, if you have a Sobolev function or a Sobolev map, the incremental ratio of, the, of this Sobolev function between two points can be bounded by the maximal function, uh, are the with maximal function associated to the gradient of uh, this function at the first point plus the same term on the on the on the other point as as you can see from from this inequality here uh, very well so from this point you can uh, use a Gronwell type argument and you get that the incremental ratio of the flow is bounded by um, the exponential of the integral between zero one of the maximal function uh, of the distributional derivative of bt uh, computed along uh, the flow the flow line starting from x plus the symmetric term um, so in particular the function gr that was in uh, in the previous slide in this case takes the form which is the maximal function associated to the distributional derivative of bt and this function is uh, finite almost everywhere so you can take the sublevel set of this function and get Lucy Lipschitz regularity uh, now I, I, I would like to to say something about um, we, we saw in the previous talk uh, how to construct the, the differential of a Sobolev function. We building upon this, we can easily construct what is the differential of a Lucy Lipschitz function. So the differential of uh, a Lucy Lipschitz function is defined in the following way. So thanks to the Lucy Lipschitz property, you can subdivide the space into some borel set on which the function f is uh, is Lipschitz. Then uh, you can extend the function from the set uh, EI to the to the whole space such that uh, to, a, to a Lipschitz function over, all, over the whole space, and we call it GJ. And for this function, we can compute the, the differential. Then we multiply this by the set EJ, and we sum up over all J. We define this to be the differential of the function F. And what is important, thanks to the locality properties of the differential that we saw in the previous uh, talk, we have that this notion of differential is independent of the choice of the extension that we, we have chosen. Uh, building upon this, you can uh, easily define what is the differential uh, of a map now, which with the Lucy Lipschitz property from X into X. So uh, we would like to define what is the differential of this map phi uh, as an object, as a linear object, which takes a measurable vector field and returns you back another measurable vector fields. So what, what, what we would like to do is that to build, uh, to use a formula which is available in the smooth setting by the chain rule in the for smooth object in the smooth setting, you have that the, the, fir the first inequality in display here holds. But I want to stress now that we can use this uh, as an help to define what is the differential of phi applies to V because the right hand side makes sense in metric measure space because G composed phi if g is Lipschitz and phi is the Lucy Lipschitz property the composition has the Lucy Lipschitz property so you can use uh, uh, item one uh, so the right hand side make, makes perfectly sense and you can you use the right hand side to define indeed you can do it the, the differential of phi applied to v why did I say this because the whole point was to define what is the differential of, of the flow so thanks to the regularity theory of regular Lagrangian flow, in particular to Lucy Lipschitz regularity, uh, we use bullet point two, and we, we can define what is the differential of the flow as an element from L0 Tx into L0 Tx. Now, before going to the last part of the presentation, let me just say, uh, recap the setting which we are working. So why we are working on RCDKN space? We are working on RCDKN space because we have... Uh, existence of a uh, Sobolev vector field, which allows to speak about the theory of regular Lagrangian flows. And you can do, we can do second order calculus. And uh, why we assume non-collapsed RCDKN, because uh, in this setting, we have the local estimates on, uh, the, um, on the flow and the infinitesimal estimate on the growth of the modulus of the differential that I presented before. So now let's move to, to, to our construction. And uh, let me put uh, and once more the picture that, 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 that I put at the, at, the, at the beginning. 
So the strategies to follow are in an analogy. We have to look for a smooth computation that can be adapted to our setting. And the key point here is to exploit as much as possible the regularity of, 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 of Lagrangian flows. We have seen the, 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 covariant, the covariant derivative uh, can be expressed in terms of this blue uh, expression there on the right. And we would like to take that one um, as a, a definition of uh, convective derivative in, uh, in, in, in our setting. Uh, so if the um, here what we have is that if the carb little v of t is a sufficiently regular at the initial point, we can uh, so we can differentiate with respect to time. The right hand side can be can, can be defined, and this will be uh, what we ask in uh, in our setting. So given a uh, carb v with values in L zero tx, uh, which is a carb uh, um, of vector field, which is uh, let's say a, di a diffused counterpart of the what we saw in the last slide of the carb living at the initial tangent space, we can consider its image via the differential of the flow. And uh, by analogy with the previous slide, we can define what is the, conve the convective derivative. Uh, we say that a parallel transportation of V bar, uh, in, uh, which is a measurable vector field along the flow of Bt, is a vector field capital V of t, is a curve that's associated to t capital V of t, where capital V of t is the image via the differential of the flow of a curve little V of t, which is sufficiently regular so that we can compute the covariant derivative, the convective derivative. The convective derivative is zero, and the valuation at time zero is equal to v bar. What we can prove, basically, with the same strategy of the previous slide that I'd like to show you once more, uh, namely, uh, we can solve the problem in the remaining setting by sol solving this ordinary differential equation. By the same strategy, we can prove existence in our setting saying that given a vector field v bar and the flow of a vector field bt, then there exists a, a Sobolev curve with values in L0 tx, such that its image through the differential of the flow is a parallel transport of v bar along the flow, according to our notion. But to, to, be, to be satisfied about our, our notion, we would like to have uniqueness and in particular, the, the Leibniz formula, which allows for uh, computation. And uh, that's the last part of the of the of the presentation. And uh, I would like to show what we mean by the Leibniz formula. I put again in the yellow at the at the top the what I meant by Leibniz formula in the in the smooth setting. And uh, you can see by analogy we can prove something which is uh, which is very similar. So given a uh, two vector field capital V of t and capital Z of t, which are both the image through the differential of the flow of sufficiently regular curves living at, at the initial tangent space, uh, we have that for almost every initial point x, the curve that associates to t, the scalar product between uh, these two vector fields, is in W12, computed along the flow is in W12, and its derivative with respect to time uh, involves the convective derivative of the first vector field multiplied scalarly by the second, computed along the flow, uh, plus a symmetric term. Um, how much time? Okay. Uh, now, in the last part, I would like to to sketch the proof, but or sketch, do a sketch of this proof. But more, what I want to do is to recast this um, the difficulty of proving this uh, Leibniz formula into a functional analytic uh, problem that uh, will be clear in a moment. So uh, since the scalar product is defined by polarization, by polarization here in the improving this equality here, we can consider capital V of T to be equal to capital Z of T. So what we really want is to differentiate the modulus uh, squared of the differential of the flow applied to this little V of T. But by a density argument, we can actually simplify our V of T and consider it to be um, let's say a simple vector field in a sense that is a piecewise in time equal to the gradient of uh, some very good function in space. So we can reduce a little bit more the problem. And what we really want to do is to differentiate in time uh, the, the, this function, this function uh, the, sorry, I will tell you the one, one over two, the modulus square of the differential, the, the flow applied to the gradient of f computed along the flow. And let's say that by the, the, the semi-group property of the flow, that also also in this setting, we can reduce the problem 
to compute this derivative just at time uh, t equal to zero. Uh, so we want to compute the, this, this derivative at time equal to zero. To do so, we would like to know that the function is differentiable at time equal to zero, and we know the explicit uh, formula for, for, for the de derivative. So to know that the function is differentiable at time equal to zero, what we really want to know is to understand how the differential of the flow grows in time uh, to estimate an incremental ratio. And uh, this can be de dealt via the um, infinitesimal growth of the differential of the flow by Gwedeng and Semola. And now we would like to find explicit formula for uh, the derivative. Um, OK, so what we would like to do is to differentiate the function that I call it uh, left hand side of h in red uh, at the time t equal to 0. Since we don't know uh, it's the, 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 the value of the derivative, we can argue as follows. Uh, imagine that we, uh, we can find a function, a blue function, that we call it right hand side of h which is below left hand side of h at any point and it touches uh, left hand side of h at the point zero. Moreover, as assume that we all also know that the function right hand side of h is differentiable in zero. We all, uh, and you also know for the left hand side, then the derivative in zero coincide. So uh, here we, the idea is to, to find a careful, um, clever uh, function uh, to, to be differentiated and uh, you have this expression uh, here uh, um, on the right that I call right hand side of h, which can be found just by um, a chain rule and the uh, application of Young inequality in, uh, in our setting. So now what we want to do is to, is to differentiate the right hand side, but the second term in the right hand side is, is just a, a function computed along the flow, which is the definition of regular Lagrangian flow. So the only problem is to differentiate in time the differential of the function computed al along the flow. So the, uh, the problem is recasted in just improving this red equality, which uh, says that we want to compute the derivative with respect to time of the differential of a function computed along the flow. And we, we would like to swap the, the, the differential with the derivative with respect to time. And um, by writing this, uh, what we want to do in integrated form, wh what we actually would like to do is to pass the differential under, uh, under integration. And uh, this uh, would follow by uh, closure properties of, uh, of the differential and, um, uh, and the ILE type theorem for uh, uh, Bochner uh, integration. But this is not the case in our setting. So let me show you to you before concluding a fa fake proof of this equality. And then I, I, say, I tell what are the main difficulties. So let's assume that uh, we know for some reason that the gradient of the vector field is in L infinity. You can do it in the smooth setting. So if it's Lipschitz, then in this case, the gradient of the flow is in L infinity function. So now you can use the chain rule in, uh, the, in that formula there. And um, you, you can make that object to be uh, in L2. So the integral, the last integral in the equation, uh, in the chain of equalities in, in black, the last integral is actually an integral with values in, uh, in L2. Moreover, the differential is a closed operator between the space of L2 function and the space of L2 integrable uh, one form, uh, uh, and this closed. Uh, therefore, uh, due to the theorem, we can exchange uh, the, the differential, which is a closed operator, with, an, with, uh, with Bochner integration. So, so to overcome this problem, we had uh, to go a bit farther and uh, to show that uh, our notion of, of uh, differential of Lucy Lipschitz map in a suitable sense uh, for the function of which we are uh, taking care is, is closed. Uh, and, and moreover, that we have an ILE type theorem for uh, a suitable notion of integration, which is not an integration of Banach spaces, but uh, uh, because the curve takes value in uh, just in a zero t star x and on in the space of a two integrable one form. So, yeah, the, that's all I want to say, and I thank you. Okay, thank you for the nice talk. Are there questions, maybe starting from the Zoom audience?